Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is a video about my painting Summer Daisies. This is a two-part video, and you'll notice I'm using the reference photo on the video screen at all times to show you what I'm looking at on my iPad. I use my reference photo for inspiration. Sometimes I will copy exactly, but in this case, I am looking at the floral forms, the shadows, and how the daisies are put together. And I do some changes in the composition. In part one, I lay out the watercolor with my brush and not a pencil. This makes me feel a little freer to compose and change things up as I go. You'll see me begin to sketch the watercolor flowers and the background around them at the same time because white flowers in watercolor are not painted white but rather defined by the colors around them just so that we can see their shapes. Although I do use other colors in the white flowers and I have some fun with them. I hope you like it and you'll give it a thumbs up. Also ask you to subscribe. Now let's paint. I'm beginning a painting called Summer Daisies. Daisies are an interesting challenge because they are primarily a white flower. And the way to show white in watercolor is by leaving the paper white. So in order to paint the daisies, basically the whites have to be painted around. Even a white flower will have some shading. So I'm starting wet on wet and putting in some soft shadow colors onto the paper roughly forming where the flowers will be. Now, I know that daisies are not pink, unless they're supposed to be a pink daisy. And I know they're not blue and purple either but I would really rather shade with pretty colors, softly done, than with gray. And that's my personal preference. My thought process was if I paint in the basic flower colors and shapes as opposed to drawing them with a pencil, maybe I could keep them a little softer and looser and make a more flowing floral than if I did careful pencil drawing. But of course, a pencil drawing is absolutely imperative for some people, and for me as well sometimes. This was a bit of an experiment. Again, the paper is still wet, but not too wet, and I'm beginning the centers of the three central daisies. I use yellow, a bit of orange, and some burnt sienna. I'm forming the petals a little more carefully, working wet on wet still. I'm adding some touches of turquoise. Because everything is so wet, it's all going to blend together and dry lighter. And I decide to add some daisies off in the garden further back. 
I want them to be soft and faded. I begin to paint water around the daisy forms loosely. What I'm doing is wetting the background, the negative space around the daisies. I'm doing it one section at a time. I want some strong blue sky showing through in the background of this picture. And again, you can see how that blue is defining the outer edges of the white petals. Toward the middle of the flower patch, I decided to add some rose matter, which is a very nice color. to try to add a little more color to the negative space. And now I'm bringing in some hooker green dark. Because there was a lot of greens in my garden. And I took the reference photo and noted some strong darks all around the daisies, which made them stand out even more. I am now softening the edges of the distant daisies. I'm painting them with water to soften the harsh lines and then giving them a blot with my paper towel. Since they're further back, I want them to be in soft focus. Doing a little shading on one of the distant daisies. and moving forward to begin defining one of the three central daisies. Moving to the other side of the background, I am finding the edges of the petals, looking at my reference photograph, and putting the blue sky in around them. Several of the flowers are going off the page with their petals, and that works fine for me for a naturalistic type of painting. A more formal painting may contain all of the flower petals and that's fine too. So the background is wet at this point and the flower petals are dry. I'm carefully defining some of the petals and I don't want to overdo it. So I'm keeping them fairly pale at this point. But moving around the daisy and finding the edges as well as the form of the way the petals curve. So some light outlining with some watery greens where the green paint will be in the background. And once I have my floral forms basically outlined and with notes for myself in light watercolor where the petals will be that I do wish to show and define, then I will move to the background. Where the two daisies come together and where the three daisies come together, I have to decide which 
one is going to be on top. So the petals of the flower on top will be overlapping the petals of the flower on the bottom. Now that gets a little confusing and if I'd used pencil first I wouldn't be making this decision at this point. But it's working along as I go. So defining the outer form of the petals and doing some shading on the petals themselves. I am beginning to add the green background colors around the outlined forms of the flowers. I'm going to be varying the greens using sap green, hooker's green dark, turquoise, yellow, and some more of the rose matter. I'm sketching in some leaf forms that will stand out and add some detail to the background as well. I'm working to bring forth two little petals that are curled up in the front of the left daisy. Since they're foreshortened and coming forward, we only see the end part that's curled up. In order to make the white flower petals stand out, I'm adding darks around them, which is more of this negative type of definition of space. The petals that go down and underneath the others are going to be more heavily shadowed. So I shade them in a darker color with the blues and the purples that I'm using as well as turquoise. I'm trying to vary the petals in size and of course direction to add some interest because if everything is perfectly uniform I think it becomes somewhat monotonous. So I continue to shade on the flowers and then define the outer forms of the petals by putting darks into the negative spaces. I'm looking at my reference picture to see where the shadows will be. So I'm not just guessing. I put down some color and then I blend it out with water. Back to the background. I've loosely defined Two more daisies in the distant garden. And when I get a color I like on my brush, I'm jumping around the paper and adding it wherever I think it will look good. Now here I'm working wet on wet. Strong darks in the background, as well as some yellow and some pink to suggest that there's other flowers in the garden as well. The background was filled with stems and leaves, so I'm trying to keep it sort of blotchy and not real uniform in color. 
And here I'm suggesting some stems coming through to hold the daisies up. I will then paint around those stems and enhance them in different ways. It's sort of neat to paint the darker colors around the flower forms because then all of a sudden the flower forms really start to pop out. I'm continuing to put more colors in the background and to form some shapes of leaves and stems. One of the best colors for me for good strong darks in a natural organic plant type of painting is mixing together hooker's green dark and indigo. Indigo is a is a sort of deep blue. When I combine those two colors I get a natural looking green that also can be quite deep in color and give me some strong accent pops. Now I don't want my leaf to be all the same color because if you look at a leaf in a natural format it has darks, it has lights, it has veins, it has folds, it has shadows and frequently it will have some other colors in it as well. I've seen reddish green leaves and I've seen orangish green leaves and yellowish green leaves so I really do try to add some different colors to the greens to make them look more natural these will all be layered as well so I'm putting down a beginning color glaze and more layers will go on top as I continue to work. I hope you enjoyed my step-by-step -step painting of summer daisies. I hope you'll give it a like and subscribe. If you click on the bell, you'll get a notice whenever I release a new video. And all comments are appreciated. There are also links below to the products I use that you can check out too. And I'll see you next video.